we are taking the conversation back into the realm of uh, more to hear from our TaxonWorks uh, users. Maria Marta is up first. Okay, so with our group at La Plata, we have been uh, migrating or trying to migrate the database, the Orthopter species file into TaxonWorks uh, seems long ago. And we finally since 2015, and we uh, finally did it. Uh, we went to production in on September. So um, the Orthoptera species, and we are very happy about it because I forgot to mention that the big difference is that what we are expecting with this migration is that uh, several uh, research projects from the Orthoptera community will be able to be done using taxon works. So a little bit of history about our database, the Orthoptera species file uh, originally was initiated by Daniel Ote from the Academy uh, the, uh, National Science of uh, Philadelphia, uh, based on his eight printed volumes of the Orthoptera species file of this catalog of the whole uh, or order. Then in 1997, in collaboration with Piotr Naskreski from Harvard, they set the first uh, Orthoptera species file online. And two years later, uh, David Eats, the founder of the species file group at Illinois, uh, he put the second version of the Orthoptera species file online. Uh, he also, David, in 2005 with Paul Brock, I think he's here, they produced the other second species file, FASMIR species file, and then several other species file went online, some of which you have seen or were presented by Heidi, I think, on Tuesday. So later in 2010, uh, the, the administration and the management, the data management was transferred to our museum at La Plata. And finally, in, in September, we finally migrated to Taxon Works. Uh, the OSF is managed uh, at three different levels. We have an editorial board that is constituted by Holger Brown and Belen Cabrera, uh, that they are the responsible to uh, have an update classification and nom nomenclature uh, reflecting the most recent published information of the order. Uh, we have a scientific committee uh, that is constituted by seven experts of the different big groups of Orthoptera, and they are the ones who design or decide on the evaluating or they, are, they constitute the evaluating community committee for the grants in support of OSF. Mostly these grants are um, um, uh, that given to young researchers on Orthoptera to go and capture images of type specimens at museum collections, and also images of the habitats of the species in the habitats, uh, uh, registered specimen records, and uh, sounds recording also from crickets, cattiridids, and everything is later uploaded to the database. Uh, they also, the scientific committee, are also responsible for review proposed changes to higher at higher ranks of the classification. In those cases that we have incongruences without between classifications or between and the most recent classifications that are being published. And finally, the data management team that is constituted by Jose and Hernan Pereira at our group in La Plata, and of course, the species five group at Illinois. Oh, okay, there. Well, we are, as you know, or have already seen, um, the species five group has pro um, produced or developed two products. One is TaxonWorks, that is the software that we use uh, for to curate uh, the database, and the taxon pages, that is uh, what we have we are using uh, to display the data to the public. Uh, Jose has already talked to you about the, the taxon pages and the public view of OSF. In this case, uh, we display, this is um, 
the a page for taxa for the genus taxa where on the right we have smart search for names and we have this breadcrumb navigation for the hierarchy and then a tree browser to display synonyms and the descendants taxa descendants the nomenclature is being displayed on a, a chronological order timeline and references are uh, displayed on in alphabetic order. There's also a panel where we display the statistics. In this case, like for instance, there are 12 species, valid species within the genus uh, Soniopoda. The maps uh, you can uh, show, you can download in Darwin code format uh, the specimen records information. And also if uh, you can zoom into the map and uh, draw a polygon or a square, and then you will see the species that are, for instance, of Soniopoda that are uh, distributed in, the, in Brazil, in this kind of in Bolivia and Paraguay, these sections or regions of uh, these three countries. Uh, this is an example of the uh, uh, taxon pages of the species, in this case, Soniopoda crenata, where we display the images and also the gallery of photos are not in order. We have an order in OSF. Now, here is just because this is the overview of what we already, already have. It's like a summary of the data that you can find in our database. We are displaying also in this case, for instance, diagnostic characters of the male genitalia, of the external morphology, et cetera. A, a complete information of time type specimens uh, is uh, displayed in the panel for type specimens. And also we display in the maps the asserted distribution of the taxa based on references. And in this case, the specimen records are displayed in different color, either if they belong to a collection object or a type material. We also have a, a panel to show the external links to websites. And also in the case that we have sounds, it's being shown in, a, in the contents panel. What else? Ah, this is uh, for our community. If we give the first time that we give access, we give it to a practice database, to a sandcastle. In this case, a, 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 a sandbox that I think that Matt already told told you about. This um, this is because um, we prefer <laughs> the, the users at the beginning to get familiarized with taxon works. And uh, if they need to add images or specimen records, that is something that is frequently done by our community and our users, or even if they want to use filters or unify filters or anything, they, we first give them access to Sandcastle. This is being synchronized weekly with the production uh, database. Once they are, we, we haven't reached that uh, moment yet because we have just gone to production on September. But once they told us, tell us that uh, they are comfortable working with the program, we will give them access to the real database. Okay, something is happening. About three minutes. There, three minutes, okay. Also, we are having, uh, we are displaying, I am, uh, we are using taxon works for building matrices. In this case, it's for a genus that has been, uh, its publication uh, revision recently done. And we export it to a TNT for the phylogenetic analysis, and then uh, change, clone the matrix and change some characters. And we have done uh, mostly Martina Poco uh, and also Belen from our group have done uh, or obtained the uh, interactive key. So uh, as I mentioned, we have um, we are supporting our community do, doing workshops. We have done one lately last week in the International Congress of Orthopterology. We have meet, monthly meetings. We have uh, uh, done uh, elaborated or written several software manuals. And as I mentioned before, we have this uh, sandbox pra practice. 
Uh, we have really extremely good feedback from our adopters community in the last Congress. They really like the powerful filtering and reporting functionalities. We didn't have that before. The, the comprehensive specimen digitization. Also, they really like the import and export in Darwin Core, the occurrence data, or everything related to image handling, the matrix handling capabilities, interactive keys and diagnosis, something that we didn't have before. And so we really had great, uh, as I said, uh, feedback for, from our community. So the next steps is co continue curating migration errors. We have lots of them still. Uh, batch load specimen records from main orthoptera collections and we'll be starting with barbecue sessions with a um, specific objectives, something similar to what Jim has already told you about, doing uh, trying to um, make or elaborate or develop matrices, collaborative matrices for high level taxa. Uh, with uh, also barbecue sessions with major contributions who will help them to batch load their own images and specimen records data. And I also would like to uh, develop control vocabulary for keywords to tag images, sources, data, attributes, and matrices. So with this, I want to thank you for your attention. Always thank you to David Itz, the founder of the Species File Group, and um, who's... Um, who make all this possible, and Matt Yoder and the Species File Group for, uh, well, also for developing this excellent <laughs> taxon works, and to our group at La Plata. Perfect. Well done. Um, thank you, Maria Marta, for giving us that overview. I think it helps a lot, especially people who are new to uh, what Taxon Works does and how what we've been working on at the species file group, uh, the bigger picture, and certainly gives us a wonderful example of how you are building your community and inviting people in to the effort to move that data forward. Thank you. Ah, yes, you can see in the chat already someone's asking if they can have links to your manuals so we can talk about where those links are. There you go, Matt already put it. Uh, that's another part of our community effort manual to help the community help each other. So we share that documentation. Next up, John. So this is basically follow-up on what Jim Woolley had talked about earlier in the week. I know that seems like a long, long time ago, um, but this has been a sort of a, a big change to go from, uh, I'll explain in a second for those of you who don't know what Paradox is and then moving to what we have is our new online Calcidoidea database. Um, and this has been a collaborative effort from a number of different people. And I want to start off with them, which is basically Taxon Works, the Natural History Museum, some funding by the USDA Agricultural Research Service, and a, a team of people that have been helping to put this together uh, in a big way. So one of the first things I want to talk about first is a lot of what I'm going to talk about in terms of this online portal, especially is respons the responsibility of Roger Burks, certainly not me. Uh, he's one of my superheroes in all of this, and he's taking care of all the background uh, programming and things like that that finally uh, brought this up to a, a sense of reality. Um, the other superhero is John Noyes, which is something that Jim Woolley had already talked about, um, and he's the one that was largely responsible for putting in the massive amount of data for all of these calcidoids that were being uh, done with, and he did this using this, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor there, that little window down there is a view of Paradox. So he basically a simple little desktop program, non-shareable. Uh, and he used that to produce this massive database with everything being exported in tables to the web-based version that's held at the Natural History Museum. And I want to say that, you know, one of the things that the community that we're looking at are looking at simple ways of looking at valid names of calcidoid associates with named taxa, regional lists of calcidoids, browsing references, taxonomic trees, and associates of named taxa. And this is what we were trying to duplicate and basically make it more available as a community uh, resource. Now, I'm gonna use just the associates of named calcidoids as an example of what we can do and what we aim to be able to do with this uh, database. This is what we get out of the Universal Calcidoidea database, which is a really nice list of things which are organized as far as I look up the associates of a, an ant parasitoid, Eucharis ascendens, and I get a list of, by Hymenoptera, what are the ants that are associated with and what the references are associated with. It's a really nice way of presenting it. Oh, that's just me. 
let me go back for a second. I also want to note down here, we have the PDF, which John has gone through and vetted all of the uh, references and citations that he's put in that have a PDF uh, available to be exposed without copyright uh, potential. And I think this is a, a really great resource to be able to have. And I want to mention too, is that all the time that John Noyes was putting all this data in, he was also scanning every single PDF at high resolution. So he'd get all the images at their highest quality that he, he could do in the database. So then, you know, and this just shows that he's got things also separated between what are the insects and what are the plants. So you can look at plant associates and, and sort of organize how things are coming up with. So keep that in mind for later views. So this is, everything was migrated to the Universal Chalcedonia database. And this has been a historic effort on the part of Matt Yoder, Dimitri, uh, Deb, and everybody else at, at Species File and Taxon Works to get all this uh, stuff in there. So we have a, a very powerful, but also a complex tool. It's housing our 27,000 valid species. We've got things like 120,000 host records, 140,000 distribution records, and all of the associated PDFs that go along with it. So I can do the search again for its Eucharist Ascendance, and this is my nomenclature. If I can go to the OTU page, and moving down further on the OTU page, this is what I get for looking at the associates. Um, I got to admit, this sort of makes me, you know, always go into a little bit of catatonic fit when I look at this. Uh, I can sort it out. I can get the information that I need, but it's it's in a fairly complex way. I can download it as CV, CSV files and, and whatever I need to do with it, but it is a complex uh, sort of interface. So, and then there's basically some issues with simplicity of asking people to come in and look at this. So this is my first attempt at looking at biological associations for Eucharist ascendants. Uh, and when I got no associate returns, um, you know, this is just, you know, vexing to me. So I go to my next superhero, which is Jim Woolley, and I go back and I look at, okay, so what do I do wrong? And what it turns out is I had not circled or clicked the subject box when I was looking at these associations. So I was getting no records returned. I just needed a simple little fix. And I think this is, Jim said, it's, it's in part an error here because I did have both uh, was the default option uh, that should have come in. But I just give this an example of, I wanna take somebody who is a biocontrol researcher and stick them into this database and have them go search around and find, everybody's gonna be going to Jim Woolley and asking him to figure out what they're doing wrong and how they can get their answers back. So. This is the new web portal that was put together by Roger Burks. It was funded by USDA. Um, this is our little landing homepage there, and our URL is down here for if you want to take a look at it and uh, you, you know be able to use it. Uh, and now I'm going to switch over to being live on this, um, just to give you an idea of how this works. Universal Calcidoidia database. I can do this. I can do autocomplete, or I can do a regular search where I can search for the actual name. Autocomplete works wonderfully, so I can do Eucharis. All right, send and take my little thing, click on the right one here. Automatically returns me the taxonomic history, all the references associated with it, biological associations, all nicely grouped by uh, families, but also not grouped by whether they're plants or insects. So it'd be nice to have a sort by kingdom um, and the biological references. And then we got the distribution all down for where these things have been. Uh, found in various places. Um, obviously, that's one of these things about, you know, having large areas sampled. I doubt they're found up in here. Um, and then we have distribution references that we can go down on there. Um, I can also search associates. So here I can do again, Eucharis and Sendons. Come on and click on that. And one of the things is it's got these collapsible fields. I don't know why these all come up. They shouldn't be showing. It should just come down to the biological associations. And here we have the plants. And we have our ant records that these are all being found on. Note that I can also download all of my data into JSON files or TSV files, depending on what I want to be able to do with them. Browse by country. I can go down here to Germany. Now, this is sort of a different way of approaching it. I'm not looking for Eucharis ascendants, but I'm looking for all of the species of calcidoids, which are found in Germany. Uh, I'm taking me a few seconds here, but it's not that long. And I can drift down here and find my, so I'm trying to make everybody dizzy. A lot of species known from Germany. Yeah, somewhere here, I'll pass it. Eucharis ascendants takes me here and I can go back to my taxonomic history for that one particular group. 
Um, taxonomic tree is a really useful thing. I can come down here again and, and just come down. It's got all these are basically linked by APIs to taxon work. So it's as current as we can potentially get here. Um, I can look at eukaryotids. I can come down here and float through that, come to eukaryotini. And then this will give me all of these of which I can also find my taxonomic history uh, for that for my eukaryotes descendants. I don't bother with doing that. I can also do my searching references and I can do Fabricius. Okay, my search, it's, and this comes up and I can find my, where Eucharist Ascendens was described here. I can copy my bid text file. Notice there's no PDFs which are being exposed over the web because that's basically the policy at the moment. So that is my brief introduction. Um, I do want to say for those that really want to see this, this is all the code that Rogers put in behind it. Um, it's completely unreadable to me, but you know, I just thought I'd show it to you to make you happy. Um, and in summary of what we need, we need PDF exposure. And I really think that TaxonWorks needs to figure out anything older than I think the copyright year is 1940 or 1937. Anything older than that should be made uh, open access and available. Um, so, and also including listing all the open access journals. That would be like a first step. Uh, it's important this older and harder literature that John Noyes has gone back and scanned all of this. It's particularly difficult to find, uh, and that could be just made available to everybody in the community. Um, for recent literature, I like Heidi's idea earlier of adding DOIs, uh, of course, for people that can't access those institutions or can't access the, the rights to those PDFs. It's a bit more difficult. We want it to be available to all. Um, it would be good if we could get things associated by uh, sorted out by at least kingdoms, uh, plants and animals. That refers to our web page and taxon works. Uh, need a search for parasitoids. This is something actually I looked, started looking at and realized we don't have a search for the parasitoids of a particular host. So if I look up uh, seroplasties or something like that, I want to know what the hosts are. Um, we need to adopt many of the new tools that we've seen this week. Obviously, I feel like this is almost old and out, so it is old and outdated for a lot of things. Uh, and if we can find sources of funding for upgrading this, that'd be great because Roger Burks is doing this currently out of his own, uh, you know, uh, very best interests of his own personal time. Um, I also want to uh, emphasize what Jim Woolley had said. We have a whole bunch of taxon works, uh, other superheroes back here that are helping to update all of this. And again, all of this stuff is directly available through the, because of APIs, it's going directly to the public web portal and being made available. And again, thanks for everybody that's in, uh, involved in this, including Dimitri and Matt and Deb and everybody else in TaxonWorks. And that's it. So any questions? Thanks, John. Uh, this is Jim Woolley. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't think it's the first time anybody's ever called me a superhero. So <laughs> it makes my day. Uh, you, you can do the, uh, the the calcidoid parasitoids of a particular host. You can do that search on the taxon work side, then yeah. you, you would click the object. So we need to work to get that in because for biocontrol people, that's probably the single most important, yeah. you know, that geographic distributions of, of things. So yeah. I think yeah. it's just the, everything. You, I mean, the power of taxon works is amazing. And, and I've, you know, I keep no getting questions because I'm not doing something and then I need to have somebody tell me to, you know, click the little button or box or something like that. But I use it for different purposes of, you know, I didn't want to go through all of the thing, the great things that it can do uh, in terms of the, the powerhouse side. Uh, but certainly, you know, I'm trying to think about everybody out there that doesn't want to try and figure out how to use it. And they want to get this thing simplistically uh, delivered. But thanks, Jim. It's, uh, it's just something we need to get tech on to be able to. I think for those of you who are with us on the first half, uh, the was it was that yesterday, sorry, we, we talked a little bit and demoed some of the unified filters. And I think there's a lot of promise from going from unified filter results or filtered results to simplified reports that are more human readable, right? Like that that mm -hmm. infrastructure that we created in, in doing that uh, makes those kind of things much more efficient to code and, and to do and explore. So maybe there's some promise there. Andrew, thanks for stepping in last second. Uh, we had tried to get some Beetle folks, so I greatly appreciated for you to be here, Andrew. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. So, um, yeah, as you mentioned, we kind of put this together late uh, yesterday. So, um, and Kojin Kanda is here too, who can uh, uh, chime in with, with some of this. So, we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Beetles and what we're doing in Taxon Works uh, with our with some uh, cataloging projects. 
the first thing I thought I'd start with is a, a GBIF blog um, from last year um, that shows some groups and names that are not being resolved when it comes to occurrence records. And uh, Beatles, Coleoptera are up here with you know over 50% of the names just totally not matching um, existing taxonomic resources. And we're talking about you know 100,000 names or, or more. Um, beetles are have a <laughs> are are really hard to deal with because we don't have taxonomic resources. And so this some of these um, projects I'm going to talk about now um, we're really in our infancy compared to the two um, uh, groups we just heard from um, because our nomenclature is still tied up, of course, in things like this from 80 to 100 years ago uh, catalogs, just lists of species. Um, we don't, we are not starting with the database that we're trying to migrate into TaxonWorks. We are starting with lists that look like this and trying to, to get those data in um, from the start. And so uh, we, we've gotten some funding from the species file group, which has been great. And so one project I want to talk about are um, these small beetle groups. So, so one thing that we're trying to do is, uh, this is the taxon pages view, but we're trying to fill in a lot of gaps around the larger, more diverse groups of beetles so we can kind of fill in some of these nomenclatural gaps. And so we have a lot of different um, super families and, and, and groups that have maybe only 100 or 200 names. And so um, one thing I wanted to, to start with uh, here is, is our um, browse nomenclature view within taxon works is this one family Promachylidae. Uh, we can see it's, it's a really small group. There's only 37 valid names, but it's nomenclaturally complex with another 25 um, invalid names. And, um, and so we've entered the data here. Um, and the reason I wanted to start with this small group is uh, this is um, a project that we've actually now been able to uh, Publish through through peer review. So we, we've managed our data within Taxon Works, which has been fantastic um, as a resource. Uh, but you can also export this using a paper catalog uh, export. And so this is a um, HTML um, you know website version of what we see here in Taxon Works for Promachylidae. We have the the history of the family here, our references, and so we can see this kind of duplicated here in um in, in just a standalone. Um, uh, snapshot version. Um, but we can take that and also transport that into what we're used to into a into a manuscript, something like like this uh, with a lot of edits and we can actually publish it to to our knowledge is maybe the first or it's at least among the first of the actual peer-reviewed catalogs that we've that have been published using uh, TaxonWorks as the as the initial uh, data uh, curation platform. So we published this earlier this year and we have a, um, now a, a print peer-reviewed catalog. Um, I will point out that the visually, I think this is the the least appealing uh, version of the catalog compared to you know this the the website um, or the actual live data view. Um, nonetheless, this is of course a very important thing for us as we're trying to advance our careers. We have to put out um, um, papers, and it's good to get this into the published uh, literature. So we think that's very important. Um, but I want to jump now and really talk about a larger project. Um, this is one that was started by uh, Kojin Kanda, who's here in the meeting, um, in the family Tenebrionidae, darkling beetles. Um, and so I, I showed some of these uh, uh, catalogs earlier. So he, he actually took these PDFs, um, did some, used some scripts to scrape the text. Um, and was able to import a bunch of these names in and slowly, largely his work, but but a number of us have been going through and trying to uh, vet and verify those names from scratch. And so we have 28,000 valid Tenebriandid names and Cogens also worked on about 18,000 Buprested names um, along with their synonyms there. Um, but recently, earlier this year, we actually published a, a little treatment on some of these, these darkling beetles um, that, that have a worldwide uh, distribution in the genus Anetus. Um, and so I wanna, wanna talk about um, this and, and a, a project that we're just about finishing up with these. Um, because cataloging is really kind of peripheral <laughs> to the full-time jobs we already have, but of course we see this as um, an incredibly invaluable thing that we can do for the community and, and for the future of, of, of working on these groups. And so we see that um, the genus Anetus is here. Uh, we have all of the, the 
the nomenclature here in chronological order, starting with some unavailable names to our oldest available names, so forth. Um, but one thing I'll, I'll point out is this genus uh, Pengolin Gainus, described in 1917. We can see there's some misspellings of it because it's kind of a weird name. Um, and in, uh, in 2023, earlier this year, um, in a study that we did, we synonymized it with this genus Anitas. Uh, we also misspelled it, but we don't need to worry about that. Uh, but all of that's tracked there, which is which is great. Um, and so, uh, but what we needed to do is to fix some of the nomenclatural issues with this after some genus level synonymies. So after curating all of our information within uh, Taxon Works, again, here is this this output which matches exactly as we see the live data within Taxon Works, and again, this this genus Pangolin Gainus, the synonym, we can see it listed here in chronological um, order. So this is great, um, but we also want to show a little bit of then what the what does this process mean for us as we're trying to to publish uh, th this this work. The other format that you can export from Taxon Works is is this ASCII encoded. Um, document, which looks something like this. It's, it's kind of like a markdown file where you can kind of see there's some um, there's some char characters here that indicate formatting through some command line uh, scripts. You can then um, get that from uh, your ASCII doc to a Word document. And so now we have a, a catalog that is a little bit more um, in line with what we want to do. Again, we can see um, this issue here of Anitas with a uh, the synonym pangolin gainus, and we see all the chronological information. Um, so then for us, we've also found that there's a ton of work after we export these trying to move to publication. Because in the end, we actually want an entry that looks, you know, something like this for print, which is um, uh, the, the single name with the um, synonymy here. Uh, also, um, uh, we needed to shrink down author names, things like that. And uh, there's actually several peak 1917 names that we need to add um, uh, A, B, and C to for the different publications from the same year. So after further revising, we can get to a manuscript that actually looks um, something like this, which we're now um, excited about um, uh, trying to submit for publication probably later uh, this week. Um, and so also, of course, uh, this is incredibly useful uh, just to bring back to Taxon Works. And this is the Taxon Pages view, but all having all this data available, you know, so we um, have a little bit of funding, but not a lot. And we have a smaller user base, but we need, we want to operate in an open data framework and get this information out um, and live. And the data are best in their, um, you know, linked structured um, uh, ecosystem within Taxon Works. So it's been really great to have something like these Taxon pages to be able to get our data out there when we don't have um, a, a team of people who can uh, focus on this within our within our group. Um, and so, so again, as I kind of mentioned, some of the the focus of uh, what we've done, we're, we are not yet focused on public pages because we just don't have the data put together yet to really be be thinking about that too heavily. Um, but like I mentioned, we do want to be, um, you know, have open data and be sharing this, but we're really looking to distribute our data to our colleagues and for ourselves for our own research uh, tasks. Uh, as I mentioned, we really love these ta the Taxon Pages interface to get our data out there. Um, and we're really impressed and love the nomenclatural tools within Taxon Works. They are comprehensive for our cataloging purposes. Um, they really provide this powerful system that has been able to um, advance our own research uh, uh, agendas, which is great. Um, Minutes. But some of the challenges that we still face, a lot of these are, are maybe a little bit more on us, but but these are nonetheless things that um, we're looking at. Uh, we oh. internally um, lack best practices. Uh, we have a lot to learn from some of the groups that, that are um, have been doing this a little longer. Um, we're still ex experimenting, um, but we uh, need a little bit more organization there, probably among ourselves. Um, also for us, we're really interested in still getting print publications out. Um, and for that small example of the genus Anitas, 142 species, we looked at at least 10 hours of just uh, formatting 
um, alone. And that's going to vary by what your publication output is. Um, uh, but um, several things that are currently not supported in Taxon Works, publication suffixes such as A, B, and C, et cetera, for same years of an author. Uh, when there's multiple authors, also being able to export things like et al or using an ampersand versus and, things like that, that would save us a lot of time and a lot of potential manual errors. Um, another thing that we've been um, having some issues with is we are not to the point of having types digitized um, or, or being able to go around and do that yet for a lot of our groups. Uh, but we do want to include things like type locality. And that doesn't quite fit in as like a collection object or specimen. And it doesn't quite fit as an asserted distribution, even though it's kind of both of those things, um, but, but it's kind of separate. And that's an important thing that we wanted uh, data type. Um, and then this is really, again, kind of on us as standardizing some of our remarks. Um, and we really hope to be able to push subcomponents of these catalogs to, to catalog of life and beyond. And some of that functionality may, may be there, but um, we, we haven't um, been able to, to tackle this as a, as a whole group yet, but we're trying to tackle this in chunks since it's such a large problem. And so that's um, some of what we uh, face moving forward and um, happy to try to answer any questions if there's any time left. I actually wanted to address Deb Deborah's question because <laughs> um, Andrew, if you go back to the Anita's uh, tax on works view. So that paper that um, we're getting ready to submit, that was actually triggered by tax on works where we didn't enter all of this data while we were um, putting together that first manuscript. This was afterwards. I was just digitizing all the changes we had enacted. And in the course of that, Taxon works suddenly started to flag like, hey, there's a hominin here. Hey, there's another hominin here. And it turns out those were things that we hadn't accounted for in our first paper, which triggered us to have to then write the second paper kind of addressing all the, that and the issues we had. So in turn, no, so this was, that was a perfect case of Taxon works being an actual like discovery platform for us. So it would be good to hear more about that. So for those of you who are seeing in the chat, what I had asked is have the pages, the public pages or your private version that you built, Andrew, you showed us a quick sneak peek. Have they helped you see the data or things that you need to address? And so yes. Kojin was giving us a concrete example. Especially when you're dealing with these data sets where you know, like we're basing our initial data off of 1930s catalogs and then trying to synchronize that with 2000 regional catalogs with nomenclatorial changes, like, yeah, all the all the nomenclatorial checks that Taxon Works has been crucial for that. Yeah, thanks Samuel for chimes in too, that he's looking at how to get data from Taxon Works down into a LaTeX format, which is something that somebody else asked about, can I get it in LaTeX? Um, yeah, Samuel's been a saint. He's at, he's been wanting some some new um, geospatial data, and he's been experimenting with those early uh, API endpoints. I I'm curious, maybe for discussion afterwards in the unconference. <clears throat> and I know Cogen consumes the API as well. What we could do at the API level, Nikki says Pandoc pipeline to get to LaTeX. Yeah, Nikki, that's essentially what we have. You can go ASCII doc that we deck. Uh, I think we export ASCII doc. And you can get EPUB from that, like you can get eBooks from the paper catalog format. Um, and I think there is a two latex there. What you're seeing, I think, if I can answer for Andrew and, and Samuel, is that there's a need for sort of specialized rendering, like year letters and abbreviations and stuff. And what we're, we're, we have is a process where we can get people maybe, I don't know, Andrew, 80% of the way there sort of from these highly atomized data to human readable. But then there's still this process where we need to be able to tune it for publication, serial needs, and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah. I wish rendering would go away as a problem and we would just be happy with how people look and things look and everything else. But it seems like there's still a lot of, uh, of of polish that has to happen. And I might add there, so I think what, one thing that we're concerned about is scalability with this. Again, we love mm -hmm. that the data live in Taxon Works and that's where we used it primarily, uh, but we think it's still really important to get, you know, a versions of these out there and 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 put into the, the, 
a kind of literature. And uh, so right now we're doing things in the hundreds of species level, but what do we do when we scale that to, to 5,000 or 6,000? And, um, you know, this, it's certainly better. I think we've made, we've eliminated a lot of mistakes we would have made if we had been just data entering into a Google doc, you know, but, um, but there's still a lot of formatting and moving around that had to happen afterwards. And we're worried about making mistakes there too. So I think, I think, one of the take homes is, is that we really need to encapsulate your aha moments. You did the hard work of where we need to get at the next level. So, um, yeah, and 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 we we essentially need to be able to compute your letters on the fly based on the references. We've known this, and and we could truncate styles, etc., on the fly as well. And we can add whatever CSL styles you want to the system. We can render out references in three thousand different formats. But we've also created our own reference formats. And so if you guys came up with a CSL style that did that truncation, it would automatically, you know, work in terms of getting those references exported in different ways, et cetera. So some of the things you mentioned, I think we can we can handle. Um, it just just a matter of of knowing that you guys are at that point where you're wasting hours doing this stuff. We gotta fix that for you by days on our side, and then it's fixed for everyone kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah, we like we understand sort of like pages, you know, like everybody has their own unique style. So, you know, I keep harping on this, but just your heavily annotated scripts out uh, to mid-level users like me. So um if you know just sample samples of well documented code would be yeah, would be helpful. A useful tool. Yeah, uh, thanks, Coach. And we we haven't actually shared that. Like there's a we started a repo where we started sharing TaxonWorks code script. Maybe we can share that GitHub repo here in a second. Uh, we need to do a better job of, of sharing that kind of annotated code and, and sort of building up that ecosystem. Jeff Orr reminded us that we still don't have a we we've wrote wrappers around a bunch of external APIs but there are no official wrappers on Taxonworks APIs. And that will happen by the time the next Taxonworks together happens. So um, we can we can help move things forward with our own code contributions in that regard. Dimitri says, do we use style when we render the actual citation, not the list of references? Uh, good question, Dimitri. We use, we know we're just using cached author year, which is gonna come from the Taxonworks style, I think. I, 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 I think um, I think that's what we're doing when we render the short citations, essentially. 